Welcome to Point Blank. This Thursday, we're going to kind of analyze this issue that's really, it's become what we call an epidemic in Nigeria. We lost two football coaches days apart. Stephen Keshi is no more, and Shaib Amodu is also gone. We're going to look at what the World Health Organization has talked about life expectancy in Nigeria. Today, life expectancy in Nigeria by the World Health Organization is at 55 years. The average around the world is 74. We lost Stephen Keshi at 54. He did not even hit the 55 life expectancy. Amodu was 58. I have in the studio with me a football analyst, a man who has been around Nigerian football for several years. He does analysis, he does coaching, he's in football organization. He knows these two personalities very well. But before I introduce him, let me again say that, say to you, welcome to Point Blank. This is my regular Thursday program where I take on issues, mostly in the Nigerian circle, but really all over the world. We're talking about life expectancy in Nigeria today. So welcome to Point Blank. Welcome back to Point Blank. Remember, you can reach me at PJ Osage. That's my Twitter handle. handle or you can tweet at us at point, uh, hashtag Point Blank. You can watch this program anytime, anywhere by going on NBCLiveTV.com. And just, you know, click on our programs and you have Point Blank there. So you can watch this anywhere, anytime. So let's go straight to the issue of the week. Like I said, today I'm talking about the World Health Organization's uh, life expectancy, which is, which is funny. It came out a couple of weeks ago, and we now lose two football coaches that have coached our national teams. I mean, I've been pretty successful doing it. But I said earlier, I have in the studio with me today someone who's very familiar with Nigerian football. I'm going to welcome to this program for the first time, Mr. Yomikuku. Welcome, sir. Prof, good to see you again. I mean, look, I don't have to particularly uh, introduce... Let's start with the death of Stephen Keshi. Yeah. How, how do you see it? I mean, a young man, a pretty successful coach. Remember, he just didn't coach the national, Nigerian national team. Mm -hmm. He coached a couple of other national teams around Africa. Yeah. So just give us a little synopsis of you know, how you see his passing. Um, well, I think uh, Keshi's uh, death... Uh, remains a mystery in Nigeria. Uh, but if you ask me, uh, we're not just talking about somebody who's contributed to football as a player, uh -huh. but as a coach, within a very short time, he's done a lot for Nigerian football as well. But when you look at Keshi from the period when he was playing football, he was actually the one that opened, you know, the possibilities for Europe, for, Europe mm -hmm. for Nigerian players. So, and, you know, he's giving it all going from being Nigeria's under-20 coach to becoming assistant coach to the same Shaibu Amadu that died three days later, mm -hmm. and then going to Togo to become uh, the and, national coach, and qualifying, them. qualifying them for the World Cup, and then going on to Mali, returning back to Nigeria to win the Nations Cup and all that. So uh, when you look at Stephen Keshi as a, as a person, you, you come to terms with the reality of life that um, whatever you put in, whatever you're doing it, don't expect people to say thank you. But when you're gone, the hypocritical nature of the world let, 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 now let me, comes let, in. Let me stop you there because we're going to go to that issue really when we come to really what the issues are oh. with this uh, with these two uh, uh, coaches, young men. I would call them that. Yeah. You know, just passed away because we're going to talk about more like the 
the expected financial gains for the positions in which they have held, which mm -hmm. they really didn't get a lot out of. Because Nothing, of the yeah, definitely. But we'll, we'll get to that. <clears throat> but let us now go to uh, Coach Amadou. Yeah. I personally met Coach Amadou many, many years ago in Bauchi when he was with uh, 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 BC Boko Lions. BC you know? Lions of Boko. Uh, yeah, BC Lions of Boko. I met him then. He was a very amiable person. We spoke. We, we, we happened to have been in the, very stay articulate. In the same, staying in the same hotel and we sat down there and, you know, uh, uh, talked a little bit about uh, uh, football generally and in, with the little knowledge I had coming from another sport. But, you know, just give uh, the audience, I mean, give, give the people a little bit about, uh, because, you know, he's probably not as popular now. Yeah, I mean, you know, Amadou has always been popular, but the difference is that because Keshi played for Nigeria mm -hmm. and then he did something very special, which is uh, opening the gates for not just Nigerian players, even Ghanaian players like yeah. uh, 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 Latia, yeah. African players. So, um, when you look at Amadou, he was the first coach, you know, to bring back the Continental Trophy to Nigeria after Shooting Stars yeah, and Rangers yeah, International. Yeah, he brought it back through Business Alliance of Boko mm -hmm. and then taking an economy. And also, at, the, at some point, it was, uh, he, he went to Shooting Stars to rescue them in their bid to wrestle the uh, CAF Champions League, which was then Champions Cup yeah. from uh, Zamalek then. So, uh, Amadou was quite popular too, but in between, you can also reckon... Uh, with the fact that in between he had some uh, time that he was off the game. Yeah. You know, like traveling to South Africa, coming back, being low, becoming like a consultant more mm -hmm. for states, governments, like Edo State where, yeah, he, I he mean, he finally, he finally you know. For, uh, now, uh, the aspect of Amadou was also that he had his own generation. True. Yeah. And during this period, he was one of Nigeria's youngest, if not the youngest at that time. Mm -hmm. And he was able to win trophies for Business Alliance of Boko, you know, like FA Cup. He was a master at that. Mm -hmm. Everybody knew that. Yeah, you can expect that they will win. <laughs> exactly, yeah. yeah. So you could expect that Amadou will win the FA Cup because mm -hmm. he had this, you know, special knowledge, mm -hmm. which was more like he regularly updated himself at that time. Yeah. So he was ahead of his peers, and he was just going right into coaching as a very young man. So uh, when you look at him through this uh, spectrum, you will understand the, the possibilities that him uh, not being as popular as Keshi should be understandable. Okay. Know. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we'll look at what we really want to talk about. The health of Nigerians generally. But we're, using, we're looking at the health of Nigerians doing what? Using these two <laughs> unfortunate situations to look at the health <laughs> of Nigerians. Okay. So, no, let's take that quick break. Uh, when we come back, we'll delve into the WHO numbers and the life expectancy of Nigerians. Uh, so we'll take a break. Be right back.
Welcome back. You're still on to Point Blank for this Thursday. My name is Patrick Omosagin. Remember, you can always tweet at me at PJ Osagi. I'd love to have your comments. I'd love to even answer some of your questions. So let's get to doing that. I mean, it's, some, it's your program. I'm only just here to put out issues before you and tell you what my point of view is. So do that. Tweet at me or you hashtag Point Blank or watch me anywhere, anytime on NBCLiveTV.com. I still have with me Mr. Yomikuku, who I said is you know, very vast in Nigerian football knowledge. He's got a, great, got a great handle of what happens in Nigerian football. But I'll now test a little bit of his knowledge, what he knows about uh, a little bit of medicine or health, health. <laughs> about Nigerian football coaches because we lose two coaches back to back in a space of five days. Yeah. So welcome back, Mr. Yomikuku. Yeah, one of the things we also, you know, I'm very happy you're talking about the health issues right mm -hmm. now. Uh, but it's always been on the ground. We lost Abdullahi Bebe, mm -hmm. Austin Ofoku, uh, Musa Abdullahi. It's always these health issues. But because it is Stephen Keshe and Amodu back to back, yes. that's the reason everybody's now screaming. We've always had it. In the first instance, there are no good health you know, programs and health facilities in Nigeria. That's the first thing. Now, you're working as a coach, a high-pressure job. Stressful job. It's very stressful. Mm -hmm. When you're winning, they say you're not playing well. When you're playing well, they say you're not winning. When you're drawing to go get maximum points playing at home, mm -hmm. everybody's criticizing you. Now, you know the worst of all? As much as you're working, you have your colleagues right at your back. It's lobbying right. the federation to, to sack you, <laughs> and then they come in. So those are enough distractions. Uh, there are things that are naturally going to affect your uh, well-being, because you are mentally distracted, you're psychologically dehydrated, you are, you know, you just look at yourself as a human being, there is nothing that your aura spiritually gains from being, from being a coach in Nigeria. That's the truth. Because I, I mean, I'm happy you bring that up uh, really about the whole uh, psychological makeup or things that are happening around you. Because we remember that in 2013, when Keshi won the African Cup of Nations for Nigeria for the... Uh, third time, yeah. and after 19 years hi uh, hiatus, I mean, he actually resigned. And we all came to know that he resigned because they, they were going to sack him after the quarterfinal mm -hmm. because they thought we were going to lose. Mm. How an administration decides to get rid of a person when he hasn't even played a game. He hadn't played the game yet. Mm -hmm. he, he fortunately won that game and then went those, on to Those win. were the things that could so depress that, anyone. I, I can and imagine. Let, let me tell you something. Uh, when Stephen Keshi went to take the job in Togo, I was the first Nigerian journalist to visit him in Togo. Uh, then I was producing one TV uh, football show, which you call Soccer in America, uh, called uh, Front Row. Mm. So I took it upon myself to take my crew over there. We got, uh, we got to Sarakawa Hotel, where it was lodged, and I spoke with the reception, uh, the lady at the front desk, to, that I want to see him. Mm. Then the lady called him and he picked up the phone and I said, who is he? Give him the phone. So, no, initially, the first time he said he, don't, he, don't, he doesn't want to talk to anybody from Nigeria. <laughs> I can't believe it. Yeah. He said, no, I'm not, is he from Nigeria? No, I'm not talking to him. Mm -hmm. Then I think um, the lady now was giving me the feedback. Then he changed his mind almost immediately. said, give him the phone. So the lady gave him the phone and we started a conversation like, so why are you here? Who invited you? I don't know you. Why do you have to keep telling me? Mm -hmm. Leave me alone. I left the country for you. And I said, okay, no problem, sir. We're just here to do a feature story on Togo and what you're doing, your fantastic job. Say, oh, thank you for the patronage. Mm -hmm. I said, okay, no problem. Go. Then the phone went dead. I took just about five, ten meters away. The lady called me back again. I said, Stefan wants to talk to you again. And I said, so are you still there? I said, yes. Wait for me, I'm coming. When I met him, I met a man who loved Nigeria, mm -hmm. who was angry at the system. Was pain that the, the system was, you know, obviously frustrated. That really hurt him so deep. Mm -hmm. And I engaged him for up to an hour, and he was pouring out his mind. Well, his heart was swollen. Uh, and you see, yeah, that, just that, hold on, just, just give me. Let me remind our audience, we are not trying to play uh, psychological doctors here or psychiatric doctors or anything. But what we're trying to do is really tell the story of a man yeah. that died young 
and when it, and it's really not speculation, but we do know that we have administrative problems mm -hmm, in football mm -hmm. in Nigeria or yes. in sports generally mm -hmm. that could be very frustrating. And we're not saying led to his death. We're not saying that. You could know, be instrumental. Yeah, but we're just trying to say this is what he went through. Yeah. Because let's not forget, even as a player, Stephen Keshi at one time was banned from playing football in Nigeria. This same individual. The way, I mean, when a country or people decide to take your livelihood from you at a very young age. Age. So, you know, so he's had his issues with the system, really. But let's continue with your story because that is a very, very good story. Trying to lay the background. Yes, exactly. Of what, you know, what, 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 could, could, what could have happened, happened. to him. So, and that was even then, he hadn't won anything for Nigeria as a coach. Mm -hmm. He was just the U20 coach. They sacked him. He came back. He was assistant to Shaibu Amodi and they qualified Nigeria for the World Cup in 2002. Oh, 2002, yes. In 2002. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. So, he was angry. And he was in Togo two years after planning a huge revolution with the Togolese Federation and then taking care of basic things to make sure that Togo qualified for him after engaging him after some minutes. His vision was just Nations Cup. Then he started pouring out his mind. He was telling me many things. He was very angry. He was close to tears. Uh, he, wa he was actually tearful because I think I saw him do this once mm -hmm. and then he kept quiet for a long time. Then I started talking because I didn't want to see him like, you know, lose it. So then afterwards, he started speaking with me in Yoruba language. He said, can we go get something to eat? I said, no, I'm fine. He said, I'm enjoying your topic. He said, no, no, let's just go. Because I knew that he was at the point of being so emotional. Yeah. Now, the first day we spent with him, we were talking. And then afterwards, we left the agonies of, you know, what we went through with Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Then he was not asking me, what do you want me to do for you? How can I help you in your job? What do you want me to do? I said, well, I need to stand up on the, the Togolese team. I need to see your training. I need to speak with the Federation. Mm -hmm. I need to see what you guys are doing, preparing well to play against Senegal on Sunday. I said, you mean, I'll give you everything. And he gave maximum support. That, I mean, that's all we were specially treated. That tells you a story about somebody who was born, grew up, and died green in his blood. Well, look, I mean, it, there's no doubt about it. I mean, when he, look, we have to look at really his entire history as a footballer. From St. Fevers into the national team, became a captain. Mm -hmm. Really, people still say probably the most powerful captain I dress. He's always been a leader. No, there's no, he has leadership <laughs> skills. I mean, <laughs> when winning he, the 2013 African Nations Cup was about his leadership skills as a coach. Exactly. There's no doubt about mm -hmm. that. It wasn't about style, I mean, it was about his leadership qualities. Exactly, yeah. He was able to lead a people to battle mm -hmm. and he survived. But let's take another quick break. When we come back, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about uh, Amadou Shoaibo and then we'll now go back again and then end up, uh, end up this whole thing about really what the health concerns, just not for these footballers, yeah. but really for Nigerians generally are. So we'll take a quick break and we'll be right back. Remember, you're watching Point Blank on NBC TV. Welcome back. This is Point Black. My name is Patrick Omosagi. Still, still with me in the studio for this Thursday is Mr. Yomi Kuku. We've been trying to, you know, we're not playing doctor. You know, they say, look, we're not playing doctor. I don't want anybody to think that uh, we're playing medic mm -hmm, the medical mm -hmm. profession. Yeah. But what we're trying to do is really tell a story of a man who we know. Obviously, when you die this young, we always know that these are really more of health concerns yeah. and all that. No, I mean, fortunately now, there's no case of witches. Yeah, no, no, we're not, we're not going to even go there because, you know, <laughs> but these are more of health concerns. Yeah. When you die at 58 or 50 uh, or 54, mm -hmm. there's something wrong with you. But we're first looking, looking at the, and uh, we're, we're trying to analyze really his success at missed all the wrong things that happens mm -hmm. in Nigerian football organization or administration. Mm. So, but let's take a quick look at uh, Amadou Shoaibo. Yeah. What his own history is. Forget his uh, club days. Let's look at his history really as a national coach. Yeah, uh, his history as a national team coach has always been uh, the problem of somebody who has been very unlucky. You know, Amadou's style is not of that of a flair. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you, I'm not one of his disciples as a playing, his playing style. Mm -hmm. I love free-flowing football, entertaining football. Mm -hmm. I'm always a coach who believes in using whatever you've got to be able to get the result. Mm -hmm. 
And that could be really heartbreaking, you know, when you have your team, you know, playing and you have your team right the, the back to the wall. But he's very comfortable with it. He brings results and he knows how best to be able to deploy his players tactically to be able to make, make them come through all this. So for me, I, I, I never really liked a model style of play. Well, yeah. But that never really made me to get to the point of condescending to say that he wasn't a good coach. No, I mean, you he know, got results. Yeah, but again, we have a culture in Nigeria. We don't celebrate people. We, we have this thing that we normally say that, oh, this man is arrogant. Oh, that one is this. Oh, he feels he's the only one. Mm -hmm. When people are chunking out results for us, we don't take our time to be able to ask them to explain their actions based on the issues traceable to their actions. Mm -hmm. Instead, we take it personal. Oh, yeah, I mean, look. So these are some of the problems that I think that, you know, ha made some people, somebody like Amodu to, I mean, to have, um, I mean, to have gone through some of those things. Mm -hmm. I never disliked him as a person. Very good, like you, like you mentioned. He's a very good guy. You meet him. See, his heart is very plain, nice. But the only thing is, his coaching style, people were not looking at it. Well, they were they... criticizing it. And then, sorry, again, part of it again is that the, li the living style in Nigeria, we leave home 4 a.m. We don't return back home until 1 a.m. And then you go through the streets, you have beer parlors every 50, 50 meters. And then by the beer parlors, you have the short time, you know, Runs places. We call it runs. I don't know whether you know what it means. No, I'm not, I'm not even okay. going to go there. <laughs> you don't want to go there. No, so, <laughs> and I tell you something. You go to the doctors. Where are the machines? Where are the facilities? A country that has been drained massively, especially in the last 16 years. Mm -hmm. Nothing works. The governor of a state builds a so-called state-of-the-heart hospital in Nigeria. He himself cannot even go there after having an accident. Hey. That's okay. unbelievable. He doesn't want to the die. president of the country cannot even go check his ears in a country like Nigeria. So now, try to imagine you have an internal ailment. Yeah. How do you solve it? And you know, Amado's history again, he's been diabetic, he's been hypertensive for long, yeah. Well, look, That's a, it, that it, was an open secret. And, 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 and that is good that we're actually even uh, trying to look at these things. But let's look at really the organization of football and how it affected these coaches. Because look, there were so many months, I mean, for about two years, Keshi was fired, he was hired. Keshi was sent on the course, he did not go. You know, it, it was a pull and tug up and mm -hmm. down the whole place. The same thing with Amadu. Amadu was special assistant or something to the Edo State government. They did not pay him. He became a special assistant or, or technical advisor to the Nigerian Football Federation. They were owing him five months salary when he died now. You know, what is it about Nigerian organizations or administrations? Prof that they cannot get things right. How do you hire a man if you don't have a budget to hire? Look, okay, I, okay. I, I'll, saying, I'll, I'll give you an is example. Is it only football you're mentioning or everywhere? No, but that, well, well, look, I'll give you an example. There are times I do uh, uh, try to get a job at the university, and they'll tell me, well, this job is for two years, but we're, yeah, we're interviewing now, but until we get funding before it can yeah. come through. Yes. Yeah. So why do we hire people when we don't have funds to pay them? Now. Let's look at it this way. A lot of times, we have people who are lobbyists. Okay. They want to put their own men in certain positions for certain reasons. Mm -hmm. Then again, you know, we're in the habit of spending more than our, our income. Okay. And that is the reason we are where we are today in Nigeria. True. Everybody is saying dollar is rising. Dollar will rise because we consume foreign things. Oh, yes. We produce virtually nothing. Now, you see brand managers, they go take Nigeria's monies, they go advertising foreign leagues. By the billboards, the peak panels, mm -hmm. where, wh which monies are they taking? Is it not from this hard earned scarce resources we're talking about, Forex? Mm -hmm. So, in essence, most of the time, the Federation itself, offices in Nigeria, they take more staffs, more than they can pay, they because do. there is somebody somewhere who sends someone with a letter. So, it just has to be hired. It has to be, yeah. And at the end of the day, we're unable to pay them. So, and this has been a recurrent thing. It's not started with Amaju. That doesn't excuse him. Mm -hmm. It's not going to end with Amaju. Because, see, we have a system in Nigeria this way. Who oh, is there, he wants to work like Oyibo. And with that, they begin to hate you. <laughs> they begin to say, you are a problem to the system. So, when somebody like Amadu, Amadu gets hired by the Federation, then again, you need to also look at the Federation. How much are they earning? How much are they spending? Well, that's a good a lot of times, why do Federation officials travel back and forth during tournaments? 
We see that happen every time. It's because it's not their money. Yeah. So but, if you're traveling for a tournament with two officials, let two officials go with them and, and stay there. there. When but, you lose, you come back. Exactly. Home. Now you go for the opening match. You come back to Nigeria. You go in between the games. You come back. Then the final game, you say, oh, you want to go and inspire them. Mm -hmm. Are you the player? Well, look. Look, I mean, we can go on and on with this. But look, uh, let me say this. What I, what I brought Mr. Kuku to do here is really to give us that background on really what I consider the issues that could have affected uh, or, or played a role in the loss yeah, of Yeah, I mean, sorry to, break, so, mm. sorry to cut you short. Mm. Uh, you also know that Keshi lost his wife. Yeah, Before the woman yeah. passed on, mm. she was ill. Yeah, she had you know, see, for I, see, I managed uh, my late brother mm. in this city here, Houston. Look, that thing can really hit you up. Well, no, you know, look, somebody who's ill, you see your own, you don't, exactly, you, you don't want to hear it. Yeah. So, for Keshe to have passed through that, mm -hmm. and then, you know, he looks back and says, everybody hates me. The kind of uh, comments people made about him. I know, no, let's, it's uh, so, see. Like I said, let's, let's leave that alone. Okay, that's but, getting personal, is yeah. it? Well, look, once, when I, let, but first of all, let me thank uh, Mr. Kuku for joining me today, because when I come back, I'm going to give you my point blank view or talk on exactly what I feel about the health situation for Nigerians and how it has affected these two coaches. So let me thank Mr. Yomikuku for coming again. Thank pleasure. you very much for coming. So I'll be right back. Welcome back. This is point blank. I said this is where I really come out and tell you how I feel about situations. The death of these two men has just, you know, first of all, it was shocking that Stephen Keshe would die at 54. Obviously from health issues. And then Shaibu Amodu at 58 known to have diabetes and high blood pressure, hypertension. These are manageable illnesses in this part of the world. Manageable, easily managed actually. And for we to lose this man, one going to sleep and not waking up, one just saying that I feel a little bit of pain and then collapsing and not going, waking up, it's, it's terrible. We have no ambulances that can take people from one spot to the other and be cared for during, in an ambulance situation. We have no emergency rooms that can do, you know, basic things to just save a person's life. And like Mr. Kuku said, for 16 years, nothing has developed in that country. Things actually got worse. But I'm not going to talk about blaming the country or the government right now. I'm talking now about what the individual needs to do for himself. At a certain age, because really of the style of food we eat, the kind of food we eat, Nigerian men, more so the women, have to be very conscious about high blood pressure, about diabetes and all this. These are common illnesses, really, even out here. But they are so well managed. When the World Health Organization came out a couple of weeks ago and said the average life expense expectancy each for Nigeria is 55, even though it has gone up, it was about 49 some 10 years ago, even though it has gone up, it is still very poor because 74 is the world's average. Here in America, we're at 81. 55 is not good enough. A lot more people are dying from things that easily could be cured or could be managed. I once wrote this when we were going to have ministers. We kind of speculated who was going to be the Minister of Health, but since we, do, we didn't know who when they were being questioned or you know, what, 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 what uh, uh, portfolio they were going to have, I don't think the right questions were ever asked. I have always said this, what is killing most Nigerians at a very young age is self-medication. Ask anybody that lives in Nigeria 
we self-medicate and we over-medicate. You know, you feel something, you take it, you know, you just, your, your pharmacist gives you a drug. He's done no tests on you. He just thinks that should work for you. You either take too much of it or you take too little of it. Those are things we need to correct. But again, that's my point blank view. So let's take this and I'll see you guys next week. Remember, you can tweet at me at PJ Osage. You can hashtag the program at hashtag point blank. And you can watch this anytime, anywhere on NBCLiveTV.com. Again, my name is Patrick Omosagi, and I'll see you next week Thursday. Bye for now.